All right, the Free Software Foundation is over. We're gonna talk about why in this video. I actually, actually have a user email here. Oh, look at this. I'm way too buttoned up for this video. Anyway, so this is from, it's addressed from a boomer. Uh, so, last year I canceled my membership to the Free Software Foundation due to evident SJW Soros infiltrations, which ultimately led to the expulsion of Master Hacker RMS. They now elected a new director, Mr. Jeffrey Knauf. Do you know something about him? Is the Free Soy Foundation lost forever? Shall uh, somebody make a new free uh, new foundation in defense of Libra software? Happy hacking, a boomer. Well, that's a pretty good question. So let's talk about it. Now, the Free Software Foundation, as far as I'm concerned, or really the free software movement, is totally over. Like, it, it, there's no point to it anymore. And um, as this guy says, of course, Richard Stallman is no longer the lead of the FSF. Now, I'll go ahead and say, organizations, especially, you know, NGO kind of things like the Free Software Foundation, I don't know if you'd even, I mean, technically is it is a non-governmental uh, organization, but, you know, NGO usually has more political ramifications. Either way, those kind of organizations, you know, they're only, they don't really matter. It's the people who are the, uh, I don't know, the movers and shakers who, that are behind them that matter. Like Richard Stallman, like the FSF was really just an arm of Richard Stallman and his personality and his uh, viewpoint and stuff like that. So to have the FSF, I said this last year uh, when he lost his position, to have the FSF without Richard Stallman doesn't make any sense. Like the FSF is Richard Stallman, it is an extension of him, and if they want to get rid of him, I mean they're just dead, like there's no point in it, like there's no personality behind it, like no one cares. I mean no one really cared in the first place. Place, but definitely no normies care now um, but anyway now you might think oh if I say something like the free software movement is over that's like something pessimistic um, and I guess in terms of the organization itself that is but in reality the free software movement is basically over anyway because like it they sort of won okay here's the thing um, back when the free software foundation started you know, it was hard to get, like, there was no such thing as, like, a desktop free software operating system, okay? There was no such, like, Linux, GNU slash Linux as we know it now, was not a, a thing, okay? There weren't, like, usable desktop environments. There weren't, like, uh, you know, video editors and stuff like this. You couldn't do anything on free software. Like, all the memes about free software that people still have, like, normies still have, they actually used to be true back then. Um, now, they aren't true anymore. I mean, free, you know, free software and Linux, it's sort of, sort of like, um, a, a, like a nerdish kid in uh, a middle school who, like, had a pimpled face and everyone made fun of. And then, like, he turned into, like, a big chad in high school. But for whatever reason, people still nag him for having a bunch of pimples in middle school. You know what I mean? Uh, that's sort of how Linux is, mostly because, like, normies... You know, they don't, they don't know, like, I mean, the, the weird thing about using Linux, GNU slash Linux, of course, is um, normal people, normies out there, um, they, they are very opinionated about all the things you can't do on free software, and they will tell you about them. Of course, they don't know anything about it, they're just lecturing you on the things that you can't do, allegedly, um, but, uh, you know, that, that's, that's just how it is. The reality is, the free software movement was successful, like, they won, they won everything. Now, it's not to say that everyone out there is using free software, but let's just say that, like, it succeeded in animating people to actually care about this kind of stuff. Now, of, of course, a lot of free software people will be like, no, well, really, we haven't won totally because, you know, look at BIOSes. You know, not everyone is running Libreboot. I mean, Libreboot is basically dead. Um, you know, not everyone is running free BIOSes and all this other stuff. Really, the open source movement, quote unquote, won. And the open source movement, you know, I, I know that normies get the F, the free software movement and open source confused. They're very, I mean, they're, they're definitely different ethically, right? The FSF is all about the ethics of free software and why people should be free in their computing. The open source movement is supposed to be a practical movement. It's like, oh, well, if you have uh, open source software, it's going to develop quicker and, uh, you know, it's going to be easier for developers. It's not about user freedom. But either way, um, we now live in an environment where basically every, every piece of software that matters is open source or free software. And, you know, I know, I know people like to make a difference between the two, but functionally, you know, even if they have like ethical, uh, a different ethical background, like they, in real life, they're basically the same thing. So my viewpoint is, um, you know, the, the real holdback, if you're wondering why people aren't using all free software, it's the, the only thing that remains, I guess, is like public disinformation or public ignorance. Because again, a lot of people have this idea like, 
Oh, what? Could someone really use Linux as a as a real operating system like a nothing else? I don't I don't understand. I, how can they play Steam games or something like that? That's the mindset of most people out there because um, like they can't. They're they're in this Windows mindset and they can't understand anything else. But uh, for all of us who have used Linux and nothing GNU slash Linux and nothing but it for like five years or something, I mean that just sounds really stupid to us. Um, either way, I'll go ahead and say that as far as I'm concerned, when I started this channel even, I focused it, I focused a lot more on uh, software freedom and stuff like that. And the reason I don't do that anymore is because I do sort of consider it a, a battle that's been won. Like there's no software out there, um, or at least, you know, basically everything you need, there's some kind of free software equivalent, or really superior free software uh, version of something. Uh, so there's no real reason to ever use closed source or proprietary programs as far as I'm concerned. But the real battle now is the soy dev menace, right? The, the issue is like, is your software well designed? Is it like actually gonna, um, because you know, I know that people like to make a, I, I don't want to say like, I, I'm more on the suckless bandwagon nowadays, but my mindset is more that, you know, software, if it needs to do well, it, it's not enough for it to be free. Like Microsoft or not Microsoft, uh, same thing, Mozilla, right? That's free software, but it's also gotten, it's become extremely corporate and it's extremely shilled. And I think everyone sort of understands that like the quality, uh, that is given by using it is, has decreased over the years. Um, so I, I think if anything, there's this weird thing, like normies will always make up reasons for why free software just can't work. Even though again, like people, you know, people like me or, or other people watching this channel use nothing but free software and get along fine. Um, but like normies will always make up these reasons for why free software can't work. And the reason is, oh, well, if, if you don't have people selling software, well, then it, no one's ever going to write software. Mean, meanwhile, like 99% of people write software free. Like that's just how it is. Uh, now you have entire operating systems running it. Um, but the, the irony of Linux is things were better when there, when there weren't money in it, you know, they're, they're, um, before, like you had all these like giant corporations funding Linux and you had like all these desktop environments and distributions that were funded by corporations, you know, like, like canonical and stuff like this, which of course made Linux easier to use for some people. But, you know, of course we all know, but the Amazon, uh, uh, the debacle with that, um, like, but it, in, just in general, there's this tendency for like, big uh big monolithic companies and organizations just to like mess up code to make things the, the thing is people don't want simple code they don't want simple programs because that means that people are less reliant on them to fix things okay that's that's fundamentally like if you can't rip people off by using proprietary software and i, I think if anything like closed source of proprietary software most people realize like that's even if you're just trying to make money that's a bad idea uh, long term, that is. It might be good short run if you're just selling uh, programs and stuff like that. Um, but especially, you know, now how they try and uh, nickel and dime you is writing software that's hard to um, troubleshoot. It's too complicated. Um, you know, it's not simple enough and stuff like that. So that's like the new proprietary software as far as I'm concerned. Uh, things like Firefox and and uh, even well, the thing is, there is no good. Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not just trying to say Firefox, but even like Chromium and stuff. Like any kind of um, web browser nowadays uh, is just like so big and monolithic, and maybe it has to at this point in the absolute state of the modern web. Um, but that's the thing you have to work. Uh, you know, if you're looking for your personal freedom, that's the thing you have to look out for now. These like massive corporations that might be writing totally free software, but they'll always try and you know, I don't know convince you of something wrong or or even worse like software as a as a um service or something like this this stuff like telegram oh we have a free and open source desktop client uh but oh yeah we have in the encryption keys to all your messages on our proprietary server side you know that's that's the kind of that's where they get you nowadays you know people can definitely run all free software operating systems and it doesn't mean anything um uh, if they're, if they're not careful about how they use your, their data. So anyway, um, yeah, that's about it. I think I don't care about what the FSF is going to do because as far as I'm concerned, the free software movement's over. Uh, they won on all the things that they could have won on, but, uh, there still is, I, I guess the public relations issue of, can we convince normal people to use this stuff? Um, I, I don't know. I'm inclined not even to care. Like if, uh, if normies don't, 
care about me being monitored or like they just want to use drm stuff they want to use like steam and spotify instead of like actually having games and music on their own computer that they can control i, I don't know what to tell them i i don't know if they if, oh i, I don't want to have movies on my own computer i want to uh pay you know thirty thousand dollars for netflix and all these other netflix clones i i don't know i don't even understand how people work nowadays but um that's that's the hurdle you actually want to get over if you want to increase free software uh, because there there's enough to have a just free software operating system out there. So congratulations, FSF. Um, there, there's still work to be done, but, you know, the, the central core of the mission, I think, has been accomplished. All right. The end.